Good Sunday morning. I'm James Briarton. It's April the 14th, 2011 at 11.22. We have a tornado warning now, the first of the day for what will be probably a very active day across the Carolinas. Let's get right to it. At this hour, we have a tornado warning that has been issued by the National Weather Service for Iredale and Davie counties, and it goes until 11.45. Right now, the storm is located near Harmony, moving towards Yakinville. Let's take a look at these details from the National Weather Service. This was issued at about 1120 or so. They were tracking a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located eight miles southwest of Yakinville or near Lone Hickory, moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. The threat with this, like with any tornado warning, will be flying debris, will be dangerous if you're caught outside, so seek shelter immediately, and you should head to a sturdy shelter, the lowest level as interior as possible, away from windows and doors. We're expecting tree damage and possible structure to any homes as well, too. You should take shelter right now if you're in northwestern Davie or northeastern Iredale counties, including Union Grove and Olin. Uh, again, we have a National uh, Weather Service bulletin for a tornado warning. Let's switch this from reflectivity mode, which shows rain to velocity mode, which shows the winds that are moving towards and from the radar, and that will give us a good sense of uh, where they think this possible tornado could be. It's uh, waiting here to load. Uh, that's why it's currently blank on your screen. I'm going to try real fast a different radar site uh, to see if maybe we can uh, get a better image coming in from uh, either one of these National Weather Service radars. Okay, we have some colors on the screen there from Raleigh. I'd really love if I could get it to pop up uh, from the Roanoke radar. That's actually going to be probably our best shot here, and uh, you can even see at that distance here in this particular uh, location, uh, we're dealing with a little bit of what we call the radar hole uh, in that this particular storm is moving through such a location right now that it's not very easy to see on, on radar, and uh, we can get into more depth about that at a later time, but uh, what we're really looking at here is a storm capable of producing a tornado that does have a tornado warning right now that is moving out of Iredale into Davie County. So if you're in uh, Harmony or you're north of there towards Yakinville, you should be heading to a safe place right now. That means getting off the road, seeking shelter in a sturdy structure, the lowest level, interior as interior as possible, away from windows and doors. I'm going to go ahead and open up a couple other windows here as we prepare for a fairly long day here at the Carolina Weather Group. We have what the National Weather Service calls a enhanced risk across most of the Carolinas. You can see it here uh, on your screen right now. The enhanced risk is what's in orange for western North Carolina, including portions of upstate South Carolina, that I-85, I-77 corridor uh, that wraps uh, through the mountains and the foothills down to Charlotte. Uh, then we have a slight risk that encompasses all of the Carolinas. That's everyone in North Carolina and South Carolina that isn't in orange is in slight. Slight. Slight is about 2 out of 5 on our scale of severe weather potentials, where enhanced is about a 3 out of 5. And you can see that this entire storm threat does really encompass much of the southeast today. Back out to radar here, as what I'm suspecting uh, they're looking at here is probably moving out of Harmony, just north there, into Yakinville. Uh, we have a tornado warning now at 1125 that goes for Davy and Iredale uh, until 1145 or so. I think we may also have... Um, Yatkin County. Yes, we have Yatkin County in this as well, too, which would make sense because we've been talking about Yatkinville. Let's talk a little bit more about the locations here that are included inside this tornado warning. You should also be seeking shelter right now in Boneville, uh, Boonville, and getting ready to seek shelter in East Bend. Uh, this is all, of course, taking a place just to, to the west of Winston-Salem. So if you have any business where maybe you're leaving Winston-Salem or you're on I-40 and you're going to be heading towards the west, you're going to want to suspend travel through this area until uh, we get a better idea of what's happening right now. We're taking a look at National Weather Service chat off to the side of our screen, uh, and we're being told that this uh, rotation initially began right over Interstate I-77 uh, and now making its way towards uh, Yakinville, going through Davy and Iredale. Uh, and actually, if we put this uh, into motion here in the last few minutes, I can actually draw for you. I, if I'm not mistaken, Interstate 77 is going to be right about here or so. And then we have I-40 uh, just uh, near 
essentially where I squiggled that line here. So we have two major interstates uh, right in this uh, vicinity here where we have this tornado warning now. Uh, and uh, we're continuing to monitor uh, dialogue and conversation as well, too. This actually falls right on the boundary between the National Weather Service in Greenville, Spartanburg, and the National Weather Service in Roanoke, Blacksburg. Uh, so this is a joint jurisdiction tornado here. So we're going to be monitoring uh, chat conversations coming out of uh, two of those locations as uh, those two teams are now working in tandem here uh, to issue these tornado warnings that go until 1145 for Davie, Iredale, and Yale. Yakin counties. Uh, again, coming up on 1130, you're watching uh, the beginning of severe weather coverage on the Carolina Weather Group as we are tracking a thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado near Harmony, moving northeast now at 50 miles an hour. Um, we are monitoring some comments here. Uh, we're going to give me a second here while I continue to uh, scan through the conversation that is happening right now at the National Weather Service, some of which is shared with media members like ourselves. Uh, and I just kind of want to see exactly what it is that they are looking at here. Yeah, they're having a bit of the same conversation we are on our uh, live platforms here of the Carolina Weather Group about the uh, radar coverage in the area, trying to pinpoint exactly uh, where this is. So really what that tells us, folks, is that if you're anywhere inside these polygons right now, you should be seeking shelter because uh, it's really something that we can't, I can't I can't necessarily circle it for you and tell you exactly down to the street level where this thing is uh, just because it's located so far away from uh, radars. Uh, and without getting too far away from what it is that we're covering, we've got a radar up in Roanoke. We've got one out towards Raleigh. We've got one out towards Greenville, Spartanburg, and we have a low power, what's called terminal Doppler radar in Charlotte, but it doesn't extend out really all that far. Uh, and you can see here that our tornado warning kind of falls right in the middle of all of this, which means that the data we're getting is is less than ideal. Uh, and so we're continuing to monitor now this tornado warning. Uh, and so we're going to be watching for the cell. The tornado, I think, is going to be roughly in this area, just north of Harmony, moving out of Iredale now towards Yakin County. Uh, Yakinville, you're going to probably be right in the bullseye of this thing here as we make our way closer to about the 1140 five hour or so. So if you're uh, watching us on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, whatever it may be in Davie, Iredale, or Yakin counties here in North Carolina, you're going to want to be uh, seeking shelter and moving to a safe place uh, as we continue to monitor this information. Uh, we are watching for and monitoring some initial reports of a potential lowering in the clouds that is not yet on the ground. We're waiting to find out exactly where the uh, National Weather Service thinks uh, that might be happening, but that's exactly actually what really prompted them to issue this uh, tornado warning. We do not have confirmation of a tornado on the ground, but this thing could uh, potentially lower from the clouds onto the ground at any moment, and that's why they've gone ahead and issued the tornado warning. You should not be waiting for me to tell you there's a tornado warning on the ground before heading to your safe place. If you're inside those red polygons that are on your screen right now, you need to be heading to your safe place. That's the lowest level of your house uh, or the sturdiest structure that you have access to as interior as possible. When we say that, we mean as far away from the outside walls and windows as possible. If you've got an interior room where you can actually have extra walls between you and the outside as possible, that would be most ideal. It's 1130. You're listening and watching live severe weather coverage on the Carolina Weather Group. I'm James Briarton from Charlotte. We are monitoring now our first tornado warning of the day. Uh, and I say that because we have what the Storm Prediction Center classifies as an enhanced risk across Western North Carolina and a slight risk across all of the remaining counties of North and South Carolina. You can see it on your screen there. The most severe threat will begin today across western North Carolina, I-77 corridor, I-85, I-40. This would include the mountains, the foothills, Charlotte, and upstate South Carolina. Everyone else has a slight risk, which is still a fairly significant risk. Uh, that's about a two out of five. To put this all into context for you, the last two days, you all have been experiencing rumbles of thunder and severe weather that have been on and off across the Carolinas, and that was a marginal risk. That was a tier one out of five. Uh, today, we are dealing with 
three out of five in some locations and two out of five in other locations. The tornado warning now has been uh, expired for Davie and Iredale counties as it's moved now securely into Yakin. And I think we're getting a little bit better of a picture of where they think this thing could be here as it moves uh, ever so closely, inches its way ever so closely uh, towards that radar in Roanoke that we're using to monitor right now. So Yakinville, uh, this is coming your way here next in the next few minutes or so as this continues to move to the north and east at 50 miles an hour. But if you're in Boonville, you also need to be seeking location. Hamptonville, uh, you're inside this warning as well too, as is Interstate 40, essentially from Interstate 77 down towards Louisville, is securely inside this tornado-warned polygon and should be seeking shelter. Uh, those vehicles, if uh, you know anyone who might be traveling through that area, give them a call as we now have rotation spotted by a storm spotter near the Iredale border with Yakin. So we have, again, uh, a storm spotter, a trained volunteer who is on the ground monitoring the situation, telling us that as this storm now uh, moves its way out of Iredale County and into Yakinville, we have a lowering in the clouds, an appendage that is coming down from the clouds, maybe not yet on the ground, which is, which is the saving grace and the good news, but we have the prerequisite of a tornado and it would not take much more for that to lower down to the surface. The atmosphere today is very primed unfortunately for severe weather potential including the risk for tornadoes and that's why uh, this will probably be the first of several uh, tornado warnings throughout the day. Uh, it's also a good time to remind you that uh, maybe at some point later today you're not in a tornado warning but you're in a severe thunderstorm warning. That's no laughing matter either. We're also watching a very significant threat for damaging winds and damaging hail, which not only can you get with a tornado warning, but you can also get with a severe thunderstorm warning. So it is very much a day to be weather aware. Keep your weather radios, your cell phones, uh, your TV and radio outlets not far from you as we're going to be utilizing a lot of them today. And do not, do not rely slow, solely on social media because uh, I hate to tell you, but we have reports uh, globally today of issues with Facebook and other social media platforms. And so we do not want to put all of our emphasis on one platform, especially if it's a platform that is experiencing some problems. New radar scan now out as we're looking at the velocity from the perspective of Roanoke, Virginia radar site as this tornado warning continues now solely for Yakin County. And this is going to be coming right into Yakinville here in the next few minutes. The area of emphasis is right where the blue and the green come together and this thing is moving now at 50 miles an hour to the north and to the east uh, right over Interstate 40 here in the next minute or two. I'm going to take a look to see if we have any DOT cameras in the area. I'm not sure if we do. Uh, that might be able to provide us uh, with a, a ground level observation as to what is happening right now at 1134. This tornado warning is uh, going to be active for at least another 10 minutes or so, and I wouldn't be surprised if this gets extended based on what we're seeing right now as a thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado uh, is moving into Yakin County uh, and crossing Interstate 40 just to the east of. I-77. If you are watching us right now and you are inside the polygons that are drawn on your screen, we cannot emphasize it enough. You should be heading to a safe place. Uh, we do not unfortunately have any DOT cameras in the area here of, of Yakinville. And I also need to apologize because I, some of you have probably pointed out I keep calling 421 Interstate 40. It should be 421. I, I duly apologize. Uh, this line right here is 421. And this is Interstate 77. And now we have the area of concern, the possible tornado moving over US 421 into Yakinville. As we continue to monitor this thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. If you're watching us from Iredale, you are in the clear for now. But please do stay weather aware as we continue to monitor uh, this thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado now. Bearing down here on Yakinville in the next minute or two. It's a good reminder, if you're watching us from anywhere 
that isn't Yakinville, now is your time to prepare. You should be uh, getting batteries ready for portable radios to stay informed. You should be getting uh, shoes and helmets ready because if at any point you end up in a situation right now like Yakinville is inside the middle of a tornado warning, you're going to want to immediately, with your shoes on and something protecting your head, move into a safe place such as a closet or a bathroom on the lower level of your house. Whatever the room is in your house that is the lowest level, furthest away from the outside, that is where you will want to be. If you are listening and watching us this morning uh, in the Carolinas or really anywhere in the southeast and you live in a, uh, a home that you feel is not safe or secure, you should consider uh, finding another facility to ride out the afternoon. Not Yakinville. Yakinville, you should be staying in place right now. But this is a good reminder for everyone else uh, who may be watching us this morning that if you live in a mobile home, or another facility that you are not confident is going to be able to withstand the strength of a tornado, then it is very important that you move to a facility that can or be ready to do so in a moment's notice uh, because we are going to be dealing with uh, several rounds of severe weather today. And this is just the uh, crux to get everything started here as we continue to monitor now this tornado warning for Yakin County, North Carolina. We are luckily now getting some decent imagery coming into us uh, from the radar site. Uh, and this thing is booking it here at northeast at 50 miles an hour, which means now if you're north of 421 in Yakinville or in any of the communities to the north and to the east, be prepared here as this continues now to move to the north and east at 50 miles an hour. Uh, we do not yet have a tornado warning extension for places like East Bend, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see that in the next few minutes or so. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that as uh, we uh, bring you severe weather coverage throughout the day today uh, on the live channels of the Carolina Weather Group. Uh, and we're going to be bringing in uh, some other panelists uh, throughout the day, including our own Ricky Matthews, who, as we talk right now, is, is asking to join our coverage. And we will uh, gladly welcome him in uh, and here momentarily as I uh, beam him in. Uh, you are watching severe weather coverage on the Carolina Weather Group. We will be providing you coverage throughout the day of the severe weather potential, which, if you are just joining us, is pretty widespread. We are in what we like to call alert mode here at the Carolina Weather Group, which means we are standing by to bring you coverage as needed because the western parts of North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, that includes Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg, Asheville, Boone, Morganton, Statesville, that's right, the mountains, the foothills, uh, and everything down to the Piedmont and upstate South Carolina are in an enhanced risk, uh, classified as such by the Storm Prediction Center, which is a tier three out of five. If you're not watching from those areas, you are still within some sort of severe weather potential today because the rest of North Carolina and South Carolina, outlined there in yellow, is a slight risk of seeing severe weather. Uh, that is, again, a tier two out of five on this scale. And to put that all into perspective for you, all of the severe weather we saw scattered across the Carolinas in the last day or two, that was a tier one marginal risk. So we're expecting even more activity today than we saw in the last two days. Be bringing in uh, Ricky Matthews here to join our coverage momentarily as we continue to monitor a tornado warning for Yakin County, North Carolina, the area concerned now just outside of Yakinville and moving to the northeast at 50 miles an hour. Let me know uh, when you've got us, uh, Ricky Matthews, as uh, we continue to uh, bring on uh, assistance here as we continue to monitor this uh, storm. Uh, Ricky Matthews, you have us now? Uh, I've got you, James. First tornado warning of the day here. Uh, first cell producing possibly a tornado uh, north and west of Winston-Salem. Yes, very much so. And it's it's in an area, as I've been telling our viewers, that is now really just coming into decent radar coverage as this thing got going 
uh, initially over Iredale County. We had a hard time uh, distinguishing exactly where the concern is, but we can see it a little bit better now uh, just to the northeast of Yakinville, uh, as you said, just outside Winston-Salem. This is just north of 421. We'll be waiting to see uh, if we get an update from the just National Weather it. Service. Go ahead. Did you just New tornado warning just issued. That's going to be north and east of where this is now. If you can take my feed, I think I've got a pretty good uh, view of the couplet here on GR. Uh, this is going to be a tornado warning for Surrey County, Stokes County, and Yakin County until 1215 Eastern. Uh, tornado possibly located near Nebo, moving northeast at 45. In addition to the tornado threat for some hail with this storm, this is a, a little supercell thunderstorm, kind of a mini supercell right now, moving to the north and east. So areas towards East Bend, up towards Pilot Mountain. Uh, usually if you're driving uh, on the interstate, you, you get a nice view of Pilot Mountain. You'll see that coming out of Mount Airy. So a lot of people know where this is. And the last scan here, just to the north and east of uh, Yakinville, looks like that rotation has tightened up a little bit. Let's get in closer here. And I'm going to turn the uh, radar off for a second. We'll bring it back on. So this is a lot of kind of farmland area, a lot, a lot of area where some homes are, not a very densely populated area, but certainly an area of concern uh, for this possible tornado moving up to the north and east around 45. So I'd say East Bend's probably our area of biggest concern as we step back a few frames uh, and kind of put it into motion. It looks like it'll come just north and west of East Bend here and then to move into, uh, let me turn the county names here, be moving into eventually Stokes County and the southeastern side of Surrey County. Now, in addition to that storm, James, if you look a little bit further north, there's another storm that's exhibiting a little bit of weak rotation. Eh, maybe there, that's a little bit of a messy couplet uh, on the north side of the storm. But I, obviously, this one is the biggest concern right now across the entire state. And what's interesting to me as well, uh, Ricky, is you can see how as this possible tornado comes closer into radar and we begin to get a better radar picture, how they were able to better define that polygon. This is a lot skinnier than that last one where I think we had a little bit of larger of a margin, margin of error and that doesn't seem now to be the case. You know, we still obviously want everyone from East Bend to Pilot Mountain, uh, even parts of King uh, going to their safe place. But, it, you know, it, it, it helps us really convey that message here as we get into better data to know exactly where this possible rotation is heading. Yeah, and I'm looking at the uh, radar out of Blacksburg right, right now. The Weather Service in Blacksburg is responsible for issuing this tornado warning. Um, they have the area responsibility for these counties as you go into Stokes, Yakin, and Surrey counties. Uh, and eventually this will be moving into Virginia, but it's going to take about probably an hour to an hour and 30 minutes before it pushes up into those areas. They put the radar in uh, sales mode, which is nice. It gives us more frequent scans, the lowest levels of the atmosphere, which is the one that we'd be looking at the most when it comes to tornado activity. Uh, the height of this is still pretty high up. Let me stop it and, and kind of query it. Uh, actually, that's not bad at all. We're looking about 5,000 feet up in the storm, uh, 4,600 or so. And when we zoom in closer, we've got a uh, wind of around 60 miles per hour that way. Uh, gate to gate shear, about 50 miles per hour or so. Uh, and when we switch over to a couple of the different products, I don't see any type of debris or anything like that that would indicate the potential for uh, a tornado on the ground. But this looks like some rotation still proper, probably a loft in the storm uh, moving quickly to the north and east. And that's the thing with a lot of storms that move through here. They move at 45 miles per hour. And then, you know, if you're in East Bend or you're towards uh, the Pinnacle area, especially East Bend, you don't have a whole lot of uh, heads up. The Pinnacle, you got a little bit more time, about 30 minutes for it to move into your area. Uh, but East Bend, these storms can approach quickly and move in quickly. Yeah, absolutely or so. And uh, you were talking about the radar uh, data that we're getting now and that sales mode, it's really paying off. You know, when this thing started, we had a lot of uh, uncertainty in that data we were getting over northern Iredale County inside that that hole. Uh, and so it makes our lives a little bit easier and yours at home, too, as you're trying to decide uh, where this thing is and what you need to be doing to uh be able to watch us pinpoint that for you. So, uh, you know, if you're inside one of these polygons at any time, it, it, seconds matter. You should never just be standing there trying to wait for someone to circle on a map and figure out where this thing is or, or wait for three or four sources to tell you to seek cover. If, if your tornado warning uh, sirens are going off, your weather radio is going off, your phone's going off, and you're inside this polygon, move to safe place as you should be right now in East Bend, Pilot Mountain, and King. Yeah, especially East Bend. I think that's probably the area of greatest concern from this possible tornado. Uh, the western side of East Bend is probably the area I'd be most concerned about uh, if I lived there. 
I don't know if I can turn on any streets here. I'm not sure if I've got my streets loaded in. Uh, we could try to call out a few of those. So, James, why don't you take it for a second, and I'll try to load some of my streets in. We'll see if we can get closer. Yeah, absolutely. You're watching severe weather coverage on the Carolina Weather Group. James Briarton, Ricky Matthews here as we draw towards the noon hour. Uh, we are watching a tornado warning now for Stokes, Surrey, and Yakin counties in North Carolina. Uh, the area of concern moving in towards East Bend as this storm continues to move to the north and east at 50 miles an hour or so. Uh, looking at the actual bulletin, because I'm not sure we've we've shown this on the screen here in the last few minutes or so, but this warning goes until 1215 as the National Weather Service continues to monitor a thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. Debris not only would be damaged from a possible tornado, but also damaging winds and up to quarter size hail. Yakutville, Pilot Mountain, East Bend King, and Pilot Mountain and State Park, all within the area of concern here as we continue to monitor this very dangerous situation that really is just now, Ricky, kicking off for a day-long event. Yeah, this is the first tornado warning we've seen of the day. Uh, interesting enough, not coming in an area under a tornado watch. I imagine later today we will have a tornado watch up for a portion of uh, North Carolina, if not a tornado watch, definitely a severe thunderstorm watch as more of these showers and storms pop up. The interesting thing about this one, James, is this is formed in an area where we have a good amount of cloud cover right now. You know, a lot of times we talk about how we want uh, no cloud cover. We want a lot of sunshine to help build up the instability. This one formed uh, despite some cloud cover. So that rule doesn't always apply 100% when you're talking about tornadoes and uh, severe storms. You got to be careful no matter what the environment is. But looking at the latest scan here, certainly a, a nice strong couplet on the western side of East Bend. So this is going to be approaching areas near State Road 1541, uh, State Road 1543, uh, Westerior Drive areas for a little bit further north uh, would be Beauty Drive areas near Martins Mill Road. Uh, and then eventually we're going to be moving into the uh, the Surrey County area. Looks like Stokes County for a while may miss some of this as it pushes up to the north and uh, east. Looks like Pinnacle would probably be the biggest town of concern right now for me. Uh, and then going up toward U.S. Highway 52, I'd be worried if I lived up in that area. And then, you know, I mentioned that other storm here for a second. There is looking like a Another cup of trying to form here on the western side. We'll have to watch that one just to the north of this storm. I've got our lightning turned on as well. And uh, we haven't seen a ton of lightning with this storm over the past 15 to 20 minutes. But now starting to see a few lightning strikes pop up, which leads me to believe that we could see a uptick in the potential for a tornado here out of this storm. Uh, that's sometimes a precursor to any type of tornado development is an uptick in the lightning. We have a... Uh, Talking about that watch a second ago, the Storm Prediction Center just put out a statement saying that a uh, severe thunderstorm or a tornado watch is uh, about 60% likely to pop up across our area soon. Uh, so all of Central North Carolina, Western North Carolina, uh, parts of Georgia as well, likely going to be included in this severe thunderstorm or tornado watch that will probably be issued here a little bit later on this afternoon by the Weather Service and Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. Of course, watch meaning conditions are favorable for severe weather. Warning, meaning that it is occurring, and that's what we have right now across portions of Stokes County, portions of Yakin County, and Surrey County with this possible tornado just to the west of East Bend moving north at 45. Uh, this is really getting ready to move out of Yakin County and head into more of Surrey County, the extreme southeastern portion. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if they cut that back here not too much longer. Yeah, so, so give you a wider perspective, over here on the left side, this little marker right here, this red line going south, that is Interstate 77. And then when you come across, Interstate 74 goes south of Mount Airy. So a lot of people have traveled that road coming, uh, if you're coming out of Virginia, heading towards Winston-Salem, heading towards Greensboro, you're probably going to jump on 74, then maybe come down 52 to get into the Winston-Salem area. I've done that several times trying to... Uh, head to some things in Winston-Salem. So that, that's a road that's pretty familiar. And you pass by Pilot Mountain. There's a rest stop or a, a scenic overlook. Uh, I want to say it's just south of Pilot Mountain on 52. Uh, so that area would be the spot where I'd be concerned about this potential tornado moving up that direction. And the late, latest scan we just got in shows, uh, once again, a very strong couplet here. Now on the northwest side of East Bend, moving to the north and east. 
a couple more roads uh, we can call out for you here. This is going to be approaching and we're getting closer and I'll find some of these roads. State Road 2074, uh, 2069, a lot of state roads in this area, but Nunn Road uh, is one of concern. Robert Owens Road, these are all going to be in the Surrey County area. John Nichols Road, uh, and then further north, we're going to be looking towards areas uh, along Dune Ridge uh, Trail, State Road 2048, Valley Green Trail, Plum Lane, and uh, the Quaker Church Road area. So if you live in any of those areas, you know anyone who lives in the southeastern side of Surrey County, North Carolina, that's the area of concern right now for this possible tornado. Uh, indicated by radar. This hasn't been confirmed by spotters or anything like that. It's a radar indicated tornado. And we're looking about 4,000 feet up uh, in the storm, 3,900 feet up in the storm. And tornadoes usually occur in the lowest couple thousand feet of the atmosphere. So we're scanning a little bit higher up than where the tornado would probably be. Uh, so that's why a lot of times we say we need your ground truth reports because it's so hard sometimes to go off of what the radar is saying. Radar can show us what's happening aloft in the storm, but it can't show us exactly what's happening at ground level. But we know the environment today across the Carolinas is favorable for severe storms, including tornadoes, which is why the Weather Service has gone ahead and triggered this tornado warning for Surrey, Stokes, and Yakin counties. If you're in Yakin County, I pretty much can give you the all clear now, I think, James. Uh, it's really Surrey County and Stokes County uh, that would be of greatest concern. And Ricky, I'm also going to welcome in everyone who's joining us, not only on the live pages of the Carolina Weather Group, but also on all of our affiliates uh, that have now uh, picked us up on different Facebook pages and the like. You are watching the beginnings of severe weather coverage on the Carolina Weather Group. We have one warning right now that is in northern North Carolina as we're monitoring this tornado, and we'll get back to it in just a moment. But if you're now joining us, we've extended this coverage to all of our pages because we have a severe weather threat for everyone in the Carolina Carolinas today, an enhanced risk, a tier three out of five is in orange there across western North Carolina and upstate South Carolina. That would include the mountains, that would include the foothills, that would include Charlotte and parts of upstate South Carolina, but everyone else is in yellow, a slight risk, a tier two out of five as classified by the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, so if you're now joining us and you're wondering why we maybe aren't talking about your neck of the woods, we only have one warning right now, and that is for a tornado warning that we're watching in just to the east of interstate 77 in North Carolina as we close in on that Virginia border. Ricky? Yeah, I'm trying to take a little wider view here for a moment because I want to show how there's several showers and storms firing up. The biggest concern, of course, the one with the tornado warning on it. But we've got some more showers and storms just to the southwest side of, uh, I should say, the south southern side of North Wilkesboro, uh, between North Wilkesboro and Taylorsville, and then in the Statesville area, Iredell County, uh, seeing another shower push their way. And then we've got some more showers. The radar's not picking it up too well because we're all the way up in Virginia based off the radar. Uh, but there are some more showers and storms forming near Shelby, also towards the uh, Cherryville area, Bellwood, Lincolnton, and uh, also towards Forest City. So those storms will need to be watched here over the next little bit to see what they do, James, because as we uh, continue to watch these storms fire up, any shower or storm today that gets isolated enough could have the potential to produce some severe weather and tornadoes, kind of with this first round we see moving through. And then later to this afternoon and evening towards uh, the nighttime hours, we're going to be watching for a second line of storms pushing in from the west. Uh, and then if you live in the North Carolina high country, a lot of rain shower activity going on right now uh, and some moderate rainfall across portions of Avery County, Watauga, Caldwell, the western side of Wilkes County, uh, seeing some isolated showers uh, and then pushing into uh, Watauga County as well. Some moderate rainfall between the Newland area, Boone, Blowing Rock. Uh, and then as you come out of Tennessee, uh, also seeing some areas of moderate rainfall. But we'll zoom in closer once again to the tornado warning that we have right now uh, for portions of Surrey and Stokes County. We're going to go ahead and, and clear it out Yakin County. I think we can give an all clear there in terms of a uh, tornado threat for Yakin County, but areas near the pinnacle, areas towards Pilot Mountain, that's the greatest concern right now. Anywhere along 52 between Pilot Mountain and the pinnacle, right near the county line, basically, between uh, Surrey and Stokes County, those are going to be the areas of concern for this possible tornado. Just got an update from the Weather Service on this tornado. They're going to continue the tornado warning for this storm at approximately uh, 1155. Weather Service radar detecting a possible tornado to the southwest side of Pilot Mountain State Park, moving northeast at 45. Areas impacted include the Pinnacles we've been talking about, Capella, Mount, Pilot Mountain State Park. Uh, and, and James, a good kind of time to perhaps tell people what you want to do for any of these areas. If you're traveling along 52 
and you're north of Pilot Mountain right now, go ahead and just stop for a little bit. Yes. Hang on out for 20 minutes, you know, or so. Let this thing pass on by and then continue your trip towards Stanleyville or towards Winston-Salem. Uh, if you're southeast of the those areas, same thing. Pause for a minute. Tornadoes not uh, are can easily overturn cars and it's really the worst spot you can be in the event of a tornado. Now, if you live in a home, lowest floor, interior room, hallway, bathroom, closet, basement's best if you got that. A lot of people don't have basements though. So hallway, bathroom, closet's gonna be perfectly fine. Cover your head with your hands, protect your head from any flying debris. If you got a helmet, throw that on. That helps protect your head as well. Just like if you're riding a bicycle and you fall off the bike, Protect your head, right? Same thing with the tornado. Anything flying through the air or anything that would potentially come down on you if your house got hit by a tornado, uh, that helmet's going to help protect you uh, from any of those types of injuries. We've learned that wearing a helmet can significantly lower your risk for a injury in a tornado. So we always encourage people to have that. Like kids have bicycle helmets, motorcycle helmets, things like that. Ricky, we bought my son his first helmet yesterday for the intention of using it this spring on a bike ride. And I... Uh -huh thought to myself this morning, I need to take the thing out of the packaging. I don't want to have to use it later, but if I have to use it later, I want it ready to go. Exactly. And, and you know, your son's uh, still pretty young too, He's but uh, you know, yeah. uh, a lot of people have uh, child seats. Those aren't a horrible thing. If you've got a baby, put them in the child seat because uh, they're meant to protect the child as well. Uh, you know, obviously you got to get out of your car and all that mess, but still, uh, it can protect the child pretty well from any type of injury in a tornado just because you're kind of in that little cocoon of the car seat sometimes. Right, they're, they're tested for rollovers, and so if mm -hmm. you know there was some turbulence from the, the tornado, it would provide some level of protection. Mm -hmm. uh, Anything yeah. else. That's why we tell people to cover your head with blankets, pillows, stuff like that, uh, you know, just, just to protect yourself for the event of any flying debris or, or God forbid, you know, you get hit by the tornado and... Uh, stuff like comes into your home or something like that so yeah we've got this now moving uh closer ever so closer to uh pilot mountain you can probably see the polygon there on the screen updated as uh, ricky and i were talking um and uh, we'll continue to uh to monitor this we were also showing on the screen uh what to do in the event of a tornado warning which is to seek shelter in the lowest level of your house uh, we don't yet have a watch out but that will be coming momentarily either for severe thunderstorms uh or for or tornadoes and when i say will be coming likely we anticipate it we we don't have it yet but as, as ricky mentioned um a 60 percent chance of uh, seeing them the next little bit ricky i do want to show the model run in a second but i know this is actually about to cross another road here yeah, it's about to cross over uh, US 52, and I just saw a picture on social media from Tim Buckley, who's one of our good friends here at the Carolina Weather Group. Uh, one of his weather spotters reports a lot of dark clouds rotating, but not able to see a funnel or a tornado uh, with this storm along 601 earlier. That was in Yakin County as the storm was moving out of Yakin County. Uh, so certainly the storm has some rotation. Spotters are seeing some rotation in it, but not able to 100% see a funnel or a tornado with this yet, which is good news. We don't want to... Uh, have a tornado or anything with this. And I will say on the, the latest scans, James, it certainly looks a little bit of a more disorganized couplet overall. I'll switch over to CC and then just kind of glance at that, not seeing anything there indicative of uh, any type of debris. But this is about to cross over that U.S. Highway 52, a very well-traveled road in uh, portions of Surrey and Yakin County, Surrey and uh, Stokes County, excuse me. Uh, here is where the town of Pilot Mountain is. Here is Pilot Mountain itself, just the south and west of, uh, or between Pilot Mountain and Pinnacle. So Pilot Mountain's right here. The tornado would basically be right to the south and east of Pilot Mountain right now, moving up to the north northeast around 45 miles per hour. So Pinnacle, it's pretty much right on top of you right now. This is gonna be coming up on State Road 1236, coming up on, uh, this is gonna be Coon Road. Uh, we've got, few more roads here state road 155 1542 bowman's court and um uh, picking out a lot of these are state roads once again so mcintosh lane another road that some people may know these are if you, as you come out of pinnacle and head towards pilot mountain so the big major road between pinnacle and pilot mountain is where this tornado is going to be crossing here in the next little bit uh, probably about less than 10 minutes now before that happens as the storm continues to push off to the north and east Eventually going to be moving into uh, more northern portions of Surrey and Stokes County 
Uh, so we'll have to see if the weather service pushes this tornado warning any further up. We got about 15 minutes left on this tornado warning uh, that was in effect until 12:15. They'll pr either issue a new tornado warning or they'll allow this to expire based off of radar and uh, spotter reports. If I was a betting man right now, I'd probably say they're going to continue this tornado warning north and east, just kind of based on yeah. the radar signature. It certainly has become a little bit less organized right now, but there's still a summer rotation. You can see the couplet earlier was a lot better organized, uh, but still, I think there's a chance there for some rotation so that they may out of abundance of caution decide to continue this warning up to the north and east. Yeah, we'll continue to monitor that. I'm going to go ahead and show our viewers now at 12.01 as you're watching severe weather coverage from the Carolina Weather Group. James Briarton along with Ricky Matthews. The first and only warning right now in the Carolinas uh, is inching ever so closer to that Virginia border. But if you're watching us from anywhere else across North Carolina or South Carolina, this is a simulated radar run from the HRR model as we start in present time and move forward in time. What we're going to be watching for is more of these discrete cells out of ahead of the main line that you can see anticipated here in the model run that's what we're currently tracking with that one tornado worn cell then we have a main line of storms that is currently in georgia is going to be moving into the carolinas and across the southeast as we head into this afternoon i know here in the charlotte area they kept telling people anticipate this between say one and five o'clock you can see it there uh the very first line here on this uh, radar scan uh some uh, about three four five o'clock now heading towards six o'clock in the afternoon that main line moves out of charlotte then moves towards Greensboro and Raleigh and this particular model run is picking up pretty strongly here at least at least initially on the guidance for a second line back behind that that would then greet us all this evening it may even become a little bit more scattered at times but as you can currently see with the cell that we're tracking currently you don't need a line in order to produce a tornado worn cell even these discrete cells are something we'll be watching as we go through the day so this is just one anticipated model run but from the big picture it paints a pretty good idea of what we're watching not only with one maybe two discrete lines coming through but also some i'm sorry one or two very uh well-defined lines coming through but also some discrete cells that could also produce severe weather just like this current cell that ricky is tracking for sure the uh the other threat today james outside of some thunderstorms maybe some strong gusty winds you know we're especially in the southwestern side of the state mm -hmm. Even though we may not see uh, thunderstorms that produce gusty winds in every location, there should be a pretty tight pressure gradient effect that could produce some strong gusty winds. Well, actually, what we have on the screen right now is that Storm Prediction Center outlook that we've been talking about with the enhanced and the slight risks. But if I switch this over to show just the wind threat, you can see it almost lines up perfectly. That red is at 30 percent, if I'm not mistaken, of damaging wind potential across western North Carolina and parts of upstate South Carolina. So the wind is going to be a threat for those locations as well as everyone else in the Carolinas today with a 15 percent chance of seeing damaging wind. You know, that may not sound hot. But that's high. If someone told you you had a 15% chance of winning the lotto today, wouldn't you get excited? Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the uh, that's the wind threat. We have a tornado threat as well here that goes for an even uh, larger swath of uh, land across western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, and parts of the Midland. Uh, it's not labeled here on the way I've got this cropped, but uh, Ricky is uh, the brown 5% or 2%? Uh, in terms of the tornado threat, brown is 5% tornado 5%. threat. 5%. So we have a 5% chance of uh, seeing that tornado. And last but not least, we'll even talk about that hail threat that you can see even is uh, painting a nice bullseye across portions of the mid-Atlantic down into the Carolinas. So that's just a, an idea of some of the different uh, severe weather threats we could see as we go on through the day. Yeah, and... I think we're going to have some more storms popping up here just the west of Morganton now that we're going to have to watch. Uh, nothing really jumping out at me yet in terms of, you know, any severe weather potential with those. Uh, but certainly something that's going to need to be watched as we go over the next little bit because all of these little individual cells are starting to fire up. And uh, as they tap into this favorable environment for severe storms, I think we're going to continue to see uh, several severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings later today come out. Uh, if you look at the uh, the parameters for severe weather, the STP or what we call significant tornado parameters, pretty high across the Shelby area, the Hickory, and then all the way into North Wilkesboro. And a lot of times tornadoes tend to form on the northern side of these STP maximums. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now with this storm up towards Mount Airy. I'm looking at some stuff off the screen here and kind of analyzing it 
uh, on another computer. And, and there certainly is a good amount of STP or what we call significant tornado parameter across much of Western North Carolina, uh, right along the I-77 and I-40 corridor right now, uh, where those strongest storms are. But still watching this tornado warning here, uh, now north and east of the Pinnacle area, this is going to be in Stokes County. If you're in uh, Surrey County, I think we can give you an all clear as well. This storm is going to pass to your east. Just got an update from the Weather Service. They are going to continue this tornado warning, and they actually just canceled Surrey County. So it's glad to see we're on the same, wave, same wavelength as the Weather Service this morning uh, as they basically uh, cancel things as soon as we said there was a, it's an all clear. So glad when everyone uh, agrees on things here. But this tornado warning continues for this small little area here of Surrey County for about another 10 minutes or so. And then we'll have to see if the Weather Service decides to continue this warning to the north and east. Uh, they, they haven't, they've really cut this polygon down from what it was earlier, James. It was a pretty yeah. big... Uh, they didn't big really polygon. extend it out. They really just isolated its current location. Yeah, and, and so that uh, is interesting. So we're just going to have to wait and see, I guess, for the next uh, about 10 yeah. to 15 minutes to see what they decide to do. Yeah, I'm in chat. We're not getting any sort of back channel communication. So we're getting the warnings as they go out publicly uh, to you all at home as well. So again, we're going to watch now as we continue to get fairly rapid refreshes there on radar, uh, Ricky, with that sales mode, which is nice uh, as we uh, continue to monitor. And we'll have to watch, as you mentioned, some other uh, discrete cells that are forming back across not only northern Iredale County where this uh, tornado warning began, but also back across uh, portions of the foothills where uh, we'll be dealing with a little bit more this afternoon, I think, if I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more of those radar gaps uh, struggling uh, to uh, help us pinpoint uh, some of the worst severe weather today as uh, we continue to monitor just this one warning right now uh, here in the Carolinas. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and once again, not a ton of lightning with this yet. Uh, so very interesting to, to see that and, and see the lack of lightning activity with any of these storms. I'm going to stop this and check our lightning place files, make sure they're all turned on here. Make sure it's working. Yes. Yeah. I've done that. The radar scope, I've had it toggled off, and I keep going, there's no lightning. Oh, wait. Well, you've got it. It's on. on, but there's not a ton of lightning strikes well, with any of this. That's good. Activity. That's good because, you know, lightning obviously poses its own dangerous threat, and, and while it's, it's not a concrete uh, tool, but I, I guess we use it as a way to watch a storm to see if it's intensifying, right? So if we're seeing more radar or, or lightning coming up on radar, we, we anticipate that that storm is strengthening rather than weakening. For sure, yeah. A lot of times it can be a, a good indicator of a strengthening storm cell. Uh, there's been some studies that show that an uptick in lightning occurs right before a uh, possible tornado drops in a lot of storms. So that's something we're we're watching carefully. You know, this is this is interesting. I'm texting obviously here. My uh, my parents are telling me they're heading shortly to church services and they're going to be turning off their phones. And I'm telling them. <laughs> I understand that that's very polite and courteous of you, but maybe keep one on vibrate. Yeah, vibrate or uh, or, or, or something like that. Uh, I got a call yesterday from a gentleman. He, his job is security at one of the churches, and he was saying that he uh, wanted to sign up for our weather alerts because he's kind of tasked with watching out for security. Not so much severe weather, but more so like, you know, regular security would be. Uh, and so... I found that interesting that maybe today his job includes watching the storms and watching for any severe weather across the area. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those same uh, duties are getting passed probably to a lot of parents who maybe have uh, sports activities with their kids this Sunday afternoon. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, you're going to be looking at your phones. You're going to be trying to figure out what's going on. If, if, if you're not sure, err on the side of caution. But if nothing else, if you can hear thunder, you're close enough to be struck by lightning. And I think that's something a lot of people have been reminded of these past two days. I think I convinced my dad to keep at least one phone on. There you go. So. A lot of times those WEA alerts will go off too. And so. Right. Well, uh, but that's the thing, right? So even if the phone's on silent or vibrate, it'll go off, but it's not going to go off if the phone is off. Yeah. Yeah, and actually we have a graphic that I think you provided us that I'll, I'll show people exactly what that is. You know, you want to have several ways to receive notifications on a day like today, and one of them is the wireless emergency alert system, which will come to your phone, whether you really like it or not, uh, and it will sound, I could, would imagine, if you had a congregation, a church, and all of their phones went off, it would be 
it would get everyone's attention, which is good, which is good. You know, we, we don't want to cause any disruptions of, of activities or services, but if it's a life-threatening situation, such as maybe a tornado warning, uh, you know, that is something we're obviously going to want to get across. Uh, update now on our current tornado warning, Ricky. Yeah, we got a new warning. We were talking about whether the Weather Service would continue this warning to the north and east or not, and they have decided to do that. So this is going to be for Surrey County. Uh, it's going to be Stokes County, Stokes County in north central North Carolina until 1245. So for about 30 minutes here, a tornado warning in effect. Tornado we've been tracking near Capella, now up to the north of Pinnacle. This is moving through Stokes County. Uh at about 40 miles per hour. So Sandy Ridge, Patrick Springs, that's all the way up from Virginia. Uh, but these areas in northern Stokes County, so the Danbury area is down here. And then we've got uh, this road that runs north. This is Highway 8 northbound as you're going into the Stewart area of Virginia. Uh, is going to be the concern right now. So this is being closer. State Highway 268 and then State Highway 66 north uh, is where this tornado is going to be tracking very soon, where the intersection of those two roads is. Uh, also towards Lynchburg Road, areas near uh, Tom Martin Road, Bondurant Road. It's always interesting to call these names and see if I get them right. Uh, we try. Yeah, Justin Road. Apologies if I don't. Sorry. Ricky, you uh, don't have every road in the Carolinas memorized? No, I, I'm not James Fan. I'm not that good yet. Um, but this uh, tornado moving off to the north and east around 40 miles per hour into Stokes County. And same storm we've been tracking here for the, about the past, oh, 45 minutes or so. James has pushed off the north. Interesting to kind of look at the trend here. It almost looks like it, it, well, it's hard to say if it's making a little bit of a right turn or not. A lot of times if storms make a right turn, the, they sometimes can strengthen their circulation. So... That's something we'll be watching for today. As I zoom in closer to this and look at the reflectivity of everything uh, and then look at the velocity, got a little more rain here on the southern side now, which could come into this and maybe cut off the circulation a bit. Uh, and, but either way, you know, the storm's probably going to be rain wrapped and you're not going to see any tornado that would be on the ground. So don't go outside and say, hey, I want to try to see this thing. Well, you're probably not going to anyway. Uh, so don't worry about that. Just go ahead and grab your, get in your safe place, lowest floor interior room, hallway, bathroom, closet. Uh, basement's best. You got it. But a lot of people don't have basements. Mobile homes, they're not safe. All right. They're great for low cost living, but they are not safe during tornadoes because a lot of times they're not anchored down securely. A lot of times they're made out of more uh, thin materials and they can easily be picked up, tossed ripped apart by tornadic winds. A lot of people always say tornadoes hit trailer homes a whole lot more. No, reality is that a lot of times the worst damage is in those trailer parks, so they just get covered a lot more. It's not that tornadoes happen to hit them more often. It's just that some of the worst damage usually occurs there, the most visual damage. So that's what a lot of times you see uh, in severe weather events. No one's talking about the brick home that wasn't damaged. Right, exactly. They, they talk about what was damaged uh, instead. Uh, I want to pop up this map. We talked about it a few minutes ago, the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, which will be handling any watches that we get today, severe thunderstorm or tornado or otherwise, uh, giving us a 60% chance that they'll be issuing some sort of watch here uh, for the next little bit. And if they do, this is kind of their rough drawing of where we are going to be expecting the bullseye of severe weather as we head into the early afternoon now. Severe weather probability is expected to increase across these areas, primarily during the mid to late afternoon hours as we're continuing to watch not only these discrete cells, which which has prompted this one tornado warning for Stokes County, but we've got a lot of activity back across Georgia that uh, not only will be affecting us here in the Carolinas, Ricky, but uh, also going to be affecting the Masters in Augusta. Uh, mm -hmm. As I understand it, they, kind of, they tried to tee things off a little bit earlier today to get this all done before the worst of the weather came through, and we'll have to see whether or not that gamble pays off. Yeah, we're about 15 minutes away, too, now from getting an update from the Storm Prediction Center on our, our day one severe weather outlook. Those masks have been showing you with the, where the wind, hail, and tornadoes are most likely. Uh, we're going to get an update from them in about 15 minutes at 1230 uh, for our day one outlook. So it will be interesting to see if they make any changes, if they uh, you know shift any of these probabilities anywhere. Regardless, I think the, the threat exists and probably stays the same for much of the Carolinas with the chance for strong to severe storms across the entire state uh, as we go through the afternoon hours with more showers and storms now forming uh, just west of Statesville, north of there along the 77 corridor, and also south and west there towards Shelby, some showers and storms going up. Uh, and a few lightning strikes with these two moving into the uh, Wilkesboro area. 
Yeah, here's minute. a look at our, our wide regional radar as well, too. As uh, Ricky mentioned, uh, we are now beginning to see um, more rain move into the area. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to pull up a visible satellite as well, too, uh, Ricky, to get us a, a glance on that. I'll take your, your screen full um, Why I prepare that. But uh, at least here in the Charlotte area, as I make my way towards the window, uh, we are still looking at cloud cover. We've got wind picking up here a little bit, but uh, that cloud cover, uh, not the only consideration for today, but one of the things that will help us guide just how much instability there is in the atmosphere. Yeah, and today's one of those days too, James, where there's so much wind energy. A lot of times that wind energy can overcome that limited amount of cape. So even if we don't get a ton of cape, or what we call instability, thunderstorm fuel, uh, that wind energy is sometimes strong enough to where it can overcome that, and we still get these threats of severe weather. So just because uh, you may have cloud cover right now, don't think your severe weather risk is zero because uh, obviously if we've got this tornado warning right now on going across Stokes County where we had cloud cover for much of the morning time frame uh, and these storms are able to get going and exhibit some areas of rotation, which has caused that weather service to issue that tornado warning for Stokes County. So, uh, you know, a lot of times these rules of thumb are just that you don't want to trust them 100 percent, but they're, they're good things to uh, look at for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, I can actually kind of paint that picture as I pop the HRR back up real fast here um, to show exactly what you were defining to not get too much into the science. But this is CAPE. This is uh, some of that uh, atmospheric fuel, if you will, that uh, Ricky was talking about. And while you can see we do have it moving across the area, the, the values are high, but they're not insane. However, if we switch back over to say what is our thunderstorm activity, what is our fuel for that, you can see those are a bit more significant as we we head through the day because of the way the atmosphere is set up and i think not only do we see that here in the carolinas today but we saw it playing out last night that even after the sun went down in places like mississippi last night you would have expected the activity to calm down but it didn't it kept roaring all throughout the night uh ricky i heard that tornado sound on your weather service chat any news from them uh, they have allowed the tornado warning to expire. Well, I'm here for, okay, so let, here's what happened. We had that existing tornado warning for Stokes County, right? And so that one was allowed to expire, but we still got the current one for got Stokes it. County and then Patrick County. So, so a little confusing. Mm -hmm. The old tornado warning that was in effect until 1215, that was allowed to expire. But the one we've been monitoring and told you about just about 10 minutes ago or eight minutes ago, that one remains in effect uh, until 1245 for northwestern Stokes County and Patrick County. You know, I'm getting a lot of questions on chat about different locations. What's it going to be in Clemson? What's it going to be in Winston-Salem? I don't think I can stress this enough. Everyone has a severe weather threat today. Everyone needs to be prepared. We only have one tornado warning right now we're talking about, and that's what we're focusing on. But everyone has a chance of seeing severe weather today. And if you're not inside this one polygon right now, Get yourself prepared. Get batteries into weather radios. Get batteries charged on your phone. Uh, know where your safe place is going to be in the lowest level, most interior part of a sturdy structure and have things like helmet and shoes ready to go. And if you have any necessary travel today, plan accordingly. You don't want to be caught off guard on a highway in the middle of wherever uh, inside a severe storm. Yeah, I was driving one time April 16th, 2011, the big outbreak from North Carolina. Uh, and you know, it was one of those days where I pretty much had to watch constantly where I was and where the, the warnings were and stuff like that, because we had so many tornadoes that day, uh, that it was one of those days you really had to remain on alert at traveling. And it's not fun because you're like driving through rain constantly, you're driving through storms, you got hail at times. It can get really, really messy in a hurry. Uh, so driving, you know, always not the best idea uh, on days like today, if you can put it off at all. This is a, uh, th this couplet certainly look does not look as organized as it was earlier, James, to me. It uh, looks like pretty broad rotation now with this storm. Um, still some rotation in it, but it, it's not as concerning as it was to me earlier. Yeah, and it's going to be moving uh, into Virginia here in the next little bit. If you have interest in, in that area, um, that is where this is going to be headed in here, if, if it is even going to continue, or we'll see if it just dies out as it crosses the uh, the state line. Uh, refresh my memory if you can. What's that uh, road there it's about to cross between Stewart and Danbury? Uh, between Stewart and Danbury. Yeah, the major road there. Uh, the major road there, it's going to be State Road 8 okay. northbound. So it's pretty much roughly going to be crossing the uh, North Carolina, Virginia line at, at State Road 8 there um, here in the uh, the next few minutes or so. 
Yeah. Um, I do have, uh, or I'm working to bring up, just to look at uh, satellite uh, so we can get a little bit of an idea of a little bit of what's going on. But as you mentioned, uh, this is not the end-all, be-all of, of diagnosing the threat for today. Um, I'm actually going to have to do a hard refresh in my browser here. It's doing some wacky things. Uh, very much so. So that is going to, uh, that's going to take me a second. I don't know if anyone else is having problems with the uh, College of page goes uh, imagery, but uh, we'll try to bring this back up here in a second. This is going to be uh, pretty much out of our state here in about the next, say, 10 minutes or so. Yeah. And then quickly moving into Patrick County in Virginia. So we're almost done with this tornado warning. Uh, this is going to be approaching areas right along State Road 704. Area is uh, 1541. Let's see what this road is here. A lot of state roads in northern portions of uh, Stokes County here. Not any real names I can read off to you. It's a lot of state roads uh, around here. Instead of... Uh, Yeah, uh, here's a look at that uh, that visible radar. Uh, I'm sorry, visible satellite uh, right now across the region. And you can see that uh, a lot of us still have cloud cover, but are starting to get clearing. And again, this uh, is not the only factor for today, uh, as we saw with this line that made its way towards uh, the deep south last night. It still had its nocturnal energy. And so it's not solely going to be the sun, but certainly any sun we do get will be a contributing factor. Yeah, and the Weather Service making a good point in their latest update on this warning. You know, a lot of times these storms do cycle. And so it may pulse down for a little bit. The rotation may look a little weaker like it's looking right now, mm -hmm. uh, which is good news here in North Carolina. But as it moves into uh, parts of Virginia, it could easily re-intensify and produce another tornado. So just because you're not uh, really seeing a huge tornado threat right now, don't, you know, let your guard down any storm today. Uh, if, if we Even if we say it's weaker at the moment, you know, just still give it a little bit of some caution because these storms can quickly cycle up uh, and pulse up, pulse down as they move north, and especially these strong supercell storms like this one. Yeah. So we'll wait to see here in the next few minutes as this moves out of uh, the Carolinas, uh, what else might be playing uh, into uh, uh, consideration and factor of what's going on. But uh, otherwise, if this tornado warning, Ricky, does move out of our region and we don't have any other warnings, we'll probably stand down with the anticipation that we'll be back in not too long, uh, if for nothing else, rather than uh, to prevent burnout, uh, as I anticipate a very long day here in the Carolinas. Yeah, and you guys will have to cover pretty well. I actually have to go do uh, weather coverage for my TV responsibility area in uh, Northeast Tennessee, Southwest Virginia. So I'll be uh, jumping off here in a little bit to to head into work per se and uh, and do my, my other day job. Uh, but you guys will have it well covered here throughout the afternoon for any watches or mornings that are issued for the Carolinas. Yeah, we'll stay with this warning until it's uh, safely and securely out of the Carolinas. But certainly if you have anyone who is watching uh, or anyone you know who has interest in uh, the Virginia areas of Patrick Springs as it begins to move closer to Martinsville, give them a courtesy heads up to let them know they should be monitoring this as it comes into uh, their area here. But again, we do have for the next few moments or so a lingering tornado warning uh, for the outer reaches of Stokes County, North Carolina which is now extending into Patrick County, Virginia. I hear your kid has joined us for a tornado warning. He has. Stuff. He has. He's very excited. Early budding meteorologist right there. He likes looking at all the colors on the radar. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, we will uh, stay with you here, I think, just another minute or two as uh, we're watching uh, this possible tornado, this tornado-warned thunderstorm now exiting Stokes County, North Carolina into Patrick County, Virginia. And again, this is the only warning we have right now in the Carolinas as we broaden out. You can see we do have rain beginning to work on in, but we don't have any other warnings right now. But to answer the question, what is it going to be at my house today? Everyone has a threat of seeing severe weather today, not just this one area that we're watching. So now is the time to prepare. If you had any doubts in the forecast, we have already had one tornado warning, and I would 
be willing to bet we will have more severe weather as we move through the day. This is the Storm Prediction Center's outlook, which is due to be updated in the next few minutes or so. That shows an enhanced risk there in orange across western North Carolina and parts of upstate South Carolina. But, Ricky, everyone else in yellow with a slight risk. So everyone's got uh, some part to play today. Yeah, and important to remember, just because you may be in the slight risk versus the enhanced risk doesn't mean your risk is zero. Uh, doesn't mean your risk is, you know, not important or, or not shouldn't be taken seriously because there still is a risk, which is higher than most days uh, when it comes to severe weather. You know, most days we've got risk near 1% of any severe weather occurring. Today, you've got a much exponentially higher risk across these areas. So uh, certainly something you want to keep in the back of your head today and uh, keep mindful as we go throughout the afternoon. Keep those cell phones nearby so you can get the wireless emergency alerts, but those are only going to work if your cellular coverage works. So it's always good to have multiple sources, multiple ways to get severe weather, one of which could be a weather radio. Remember, if you are inside a tornado warning, you should take action immediately and seek shelter in a sturdy structure in a room, lowest level of your house to most interior. A tornado watch means be prepared for developing storms that could be a threat to life or property. And we'll watch here in the next few minutes to see if we get any sort of watch uh, issued a uh, across for our region as we continue to monitor a uh, severe weather potential. Uh, looking at the radar here, uh, Ricky, it looks like this uh, potential tornado just now crossing that state line. Yeah, I think any tornado risk has now moved into Virginia, uh, right basically where State Road 8 comes north into Virginia would be where that possible tornado would be right now. Not seeing any uh, huge indicators, once again, of a tornado on the ground or anything like that. No debris that I'm seeing. Uh, here's our rotational product. I mean, even the last scan, it's weakened a little bit more uh, than it has been. So I think, James, we can pretty much say that the, the tornado threat across Stokes County has ended right now. This is the only tornado warning we have for the entire state or had for the entire state here. Uh, still some showers and storms firing up. If we take the uh, the wide radar once again for the state, we can show you where some of those showers and storms are. Basically along the 77 corridor, north and west, some of those showers and storms popping up. And then also down across portions of South Carolina, we're seeing some storms firing up uh, just to the north there. Uh, excuse me, that's going to be north and east of Columbia. Some showers and storms popping up. Uh, you know, the Chesterfield, Chera area, and uh, Kershaw, and eventually just a little bit near Darlington, too. Some showers and storms popping up. So those areas you got to be mindful for as those storms will be moving north and east into the Carolinas here as we go into the afternoon. Yes, and at the risk of sounding like a shameless promotion, uh, we would encourage you to like, subscribe, or follow us on whichever platform you're currently watching us on live right now because we are going to stand down on coverage, but we will be back throughout the day as severe weather coverage warrants right here on the Carolina Weather Group. So for Ricky Matthews, I'm James Briarton. Stay weather aware, and we'll see you back here shortly.